Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day, and Jesus, the greatest day you've ever had. This is Jack Mormon, the authorized version and the early church fathers. Now, I remember, I think it was Philip Comfort, was it, said that the early church fathers never quoted from the same text, the underlying Greek text that the early, uh, that the authorized version, the King James Version was from, and he got that because he said, well, it wasn't created to like 425 AD at some council. And so, but then to show the circular nature of the logic, he says, well, now any passages that seem to be quoting from the underlying text of the authorized version would just be by accident because the text underlying the authorized version wasn't created till 415. And some would say in the 15 or 1600s. But see, that is circular logic. It can't be because it wasn't created yet. How do you know it wasn't created yet? Because it, it, they didn't quote it. How do you know they didn't quote it? Because it wasn't created yet. And it just goes, so the Bergan comes into a phenomenal, because he just went quotation by quotation like 85,000 times in the 19th century, Dean William Bergon, 85,000 quotations and marked them by hand and said, does this text match up with Westcott and Hort, which is basically even still today, the 29th edition of the Nestle's Island text and the fifth edition of the United Bible Society's text, or does it match up with the authorized version or does it match up with neither? And the statistics are stunning. So early church fathers and the authorized version, extremely well done. I've got this also in some type of old paperback and then some old hardback. So I just was able to get these. And uh, Bruce Metzger, when the manuscripts of a father differ in a given passage, it's usually safest to adopt the one which diverges from the Textus Receptus. How convenient. Kurt Olland, he goes into Gordon Fee. Here, the International Greek New Testament Project. So some influential patriotic works, Eusebius, Jerome, the uh, Genadius, the Berlin and Vienna editions. Uh, Roberts and Schaff editions, the Dean Bergon Index I was mentioning, that's on page 17. Um, and Bergon, it was just an incredible scholar, no doubt about it. Uh, so Gordon Fee has disputed those findings, arguing that in quotations which had a parallel in other Gospels, Bergan could not be certain which Gospel the Father was quoting. Fee probably overstates the case, and Bergan would certainly have been careful to avoid this kind of error, having gone over the whole field a second time and having employed all the care and either scrutiny that I could command. So this is Bergan. It's contained in 16 massive volumes that Bergan worked on from 1872 to 1888. At the beginning of each father, there is a book-by-book -book tabulation giving the total number of quotations. I did not have or see summaries of the times a father quoted or for against the Textus Receptus. Miller, no doubt, by interpreting and counting the colored slips, gives such a summary for the Gospels in his traditional text. Pages 99 to 121. These show a 3 to 2 margin for the Textus Receptus. Um, so in this one, only fathers, which are Christian claimers, you know, I don't call them early church fathers, um, who died before 400 A.D. or side. See, Bergon went into the differences between Sinaiticus and Vaticanus and shows that there's many thousands of differences in the Gospels alone. So they're not even one text. And then you put Alex Drinus in there. Um, not. So the summary with biographical sketches. And so I'll just show you. This starts on page 22. And it is amazing information. You've got to see this information. And so it basically just says, you know, TR1, other versions, Alexandrian, none kind of thing. And so this really undercuts a huge claim in modern textual criticism that the Textus Receptus 
uh, wasn't around till 10th century minuscules, that it wasn't created till the 17th century or the 16th century, that uh, it was created in the 5th century at a council in Antioch, and that's why it's known as the Antiochian text. But anything, it just really destroys this because you've got these Christian writers or pseudo-Christian writers from all from thousands of miles apart, and they're using some of the same things. All right, so uh, this is Ambrose of Milan, who kind of converted Augustine. So duties of clergy, TR zero, Aleph B one, on the Holy Spirit, TR two. Uh, on the Holy uh, Aleph B6 and it goes on on the Christian faith 6-3 in favor of the TR and you end up that he quoted 16 times from a from a Textus Receptus text type and 15 times from a Aleph B or an Alexandrian text type uh, Afrahat Syria TR1 Aleph B none uh, Athanasius of Alexandria, and these are 31 quotations from nine works cited in the Digest, 16 to 15 in favor of the TR. Athenagoras of Athens, TR1, uh, Aleph B. He's the first we know of to have written an elaborate defense of the Trinity. Interesting. Basil the Great, Cappadocia, 7 to 6 in favor uh, Clement of Alexandria and I think it, the digest he's referring to may be the manuscript digest of uh, uh, in the Nestle's Island guidelines for demonstrations methods used to cite Antinician fathers in the digest yeah the test passages were taken from among the 356 doctrinal reading citing in early manuscripts and authorized versions. That is a great book as well. I don't think I've done a deal on that, but I may have. If I can find it, I'll do a deal on it. Um, Robert Schaff edition. Okay, so let's just keep going a little bit. Clement of Alexandria, 5 Textus Receptus, 10 Aleph B. Cyprian, who's from the 3rd century, 18 Textus Receptus, 14 Aleph B. Cyril of Jerusalem, 11 Textus Receptus, 3 Aleph B. Dionysius, 1 Textus Receptus, 0 Aleph B. Ephraim, Sirius, uh, 1 Aleph B. No Textus Receptus, Eusebius of Caesarea, 1 Textus Receptus, 2 Aleph B. Gregory, Nazentian, 7 Textus Receptus, 2 Aleph B. Gregory, Nasilia, Nyssa and Cappadocia, six Textus Receptus, and one Aleph B. Hippolytus, look at this, Hippolytus of all people, six Textus Receptus, zero Aleph B. Hilary of Poitiers, eight Textus Receptus, seven Aleph B. Hilary quoted Sabellian for Gregory Thaumaturgus, the miracle worker they call him. That's not in here. I just remember reading it. Um, one TR, one Aleph B. Ignatius, three Textus Receptus, and zero Aleph B. And Ignatius lived from 35 to 110 AD. Irenaeus of Lyons, 130 to 202. 15 Textus Receptus, 5 Aleph B. And I think if you read through this, you would be highly impressed with his methodologies. Tortullian. Or Tortuian, 36 Tectus Receptus, 8 Aleph in B. So, just an amazing book. This is, uh, this is, this is, this is, I'm trying to see how many pages this is. This is 61 pages. And uh, he kind of goes into the back. You can kind of see how he uses the quotations, brings them into English in the back and the underlined portions. Valuable tool for manuscript study, showing once again, this is one reason of many that I was convinced of the primacy of the King James Version was because of all the disinformation on the non-King James Version side, even though it was published by great 
publishers and written by amazing, well-written writers. The information just didn't match up. So early church fathers in the authorized version, Jack Mormon, I'd grab it. God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.